Today, we're talking about an unbelievably stupid story of charity that really shows the brain rot of crypto bros. This man's quest to simply donate money is going to lead him to space. But before it does, I have to say, normally I am against scrutinizing charity. I think all charity, you know, however you give, wherever you give, however much you give, it's great. But occasionally, the motivations are so gross, the methods, so outrageous that it's worth making an exception. And that's what we're doing today. Today, we're talking about this man, Eric Finman, and we're talking about his quest to save a school in Africa with cryptocurrency. But to understand the full lore, we have to start with who Eric is. Actually, I'll let him introduce who he is. I just want to start by saying I love being me. Wait, 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 Eric, no, no, it's, we want to know who you are. I love being myself. It's a pretty sweet deal. No, 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 not who do you love, who are you? Yeah, I, I really love being myself. It's such a joy. No, Eric, tell me what you do. Hi, I'm Eric. Fine. I'm the world's youngest Bitcoin millionaire. I made it in Silicon Valley and I've accomplished a lot in my life already. But now I'm leaving big tech to fight for free speech. Okay, those were two clips of Eric from like seven years ago and then from just a year ago. And as you can see, he hasn't changed that much in that time. He still loves himself quite a bit. But in 2021, he made waves launching the Freedom Phone, which is the ad you just saw and which got a ton of media attention, but was pretty much a commercial flop after the Freedom Phone's core promise of privacy failed inspection. And the chipset inside of it, this isn't the product of someone who actually cares about privacy. It's the product of someone who's trying to take advantage of people who aren't as tech savvy. So that was my first introduction to Eric. He's clearly a guy who knows how to get media attention and market himself, but he kind of lacks that follow through. Now, recently I saw him again on Fox News Business, and this time he was talking about another company he's part of, which also kind of sounded sketchy. It's a TikTok competitor called Lamotive, which in of itself is fine, but Eric claimed in this video that it has hundreds of millions of users on this app, and frankly, I had never heard of it. No, I mean, we have hundreds of millions of users, so I mean, we have an amazing, you know, user growth. Now look, the fact I hadn't heard of this app is no big deal, but I went to my phone because I wanted to know more. I downloaded this app, expecting hundreds of millions of users. Instead, Everything I was seeing was like family member levels of engagement, like three to five likes per post. You know, your mom, grandma, and dad. There was, it was a ghost town. Hardly anyone is on this app. So again, this is my second red flag. Once again, he kind of over promises, under delivers. But then comes the mother load of all stories. Eric starts talking about all his achievements. And one of them is when he talks about a project he worked on in Ghana to donate money. Let me ask you about that project. I saw you uh, done some work in Ghana uh, and, uh, and it really you just did something that's really historic. I think this is important because one thing I love about the definance revolution is that it's going to help people who would never really people in, in industries and countries that would never really have a chance in a traditional global banking system. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, basically, we did a, a, a crypto version of Starlink. So it starts off pretty normal. He's on national television and he's talking about how he donated uh, money. You know, this is what people talk about when they talk about cryptocurrency, banking the unbanked, you know, saving Africa. But then as he gave details, I realized literally none of this is necessary. Um, I launched a, a satellite a few years ago and we put a crypto wallet on there. I believe it's the only satellite with a crypto wallet. And we were able to beam down to a, a UNICEF school, an all girls UNICEF school, school in Ghana um, with the help of, of, the, of, of a member of the Ghana government at the ground. We were able to ship them an antenna. They built it as a school project. Um, it was amazing. Okay, wait, just a second. You're telling me you launched a satellite, put a crypto wallet on that satellite and built an antenna to receive that, you had to involve the government all to send money? Isn't there a better way? I mean, if you're already going to be shipping an antenna, couldn't you have shipped cash? And the punchline is like, maybe if it was like millions of dollars, it would make sense. Like, oh, you can't just ship millions of dollars. It was $1,000. He donated $1,000 to this school in Ghana. Um, and not just any $1,000, he donated $1,000 worth of a random crypto coin called Metal. 
and then literally with no internet, they were able to beam down cryptocurrency right down to them. By the way, I like it how he passes it off as some big achievement of like, hey, we sent them money even though they didn't have internet. But that's not even true. They did have internet because you built them an antenna. You could have sent them the money <laughs> that you spent on antennas, satellites, and talking to the Ghana government. You could have sent it to them. But why do it th that way when you can build and send a satellite to space? We were able to ship them an antenna. They built it as a school project. I, I like how he says like, yeah, they just set up this antenna. It's like a fun school project. Like, was it? I don't volunteer my free time as a dish network technician, but maybe maybe that's just me. Maybe I don't know what the, the kids are doing in school these days. Uh, but by the way, this isn't even the wildest part because already way too many steps, right? But remember that Eric paid them in a cryptocurrency, which is not used by locals at all or really anyone. So guess what happens next? I'm a friend's company, mine Yellow Card. He runs the largest crypto exchange in Africa, Yellow Card, and he was able to on the ground, you know, exchange the money for local vendors. Okay, what have we done here? After everything, all of it, the satellite, the antenna, the, the, the government, you've literally had to send a guy with cash. You've had to do the thing you were trying to avoid the, doing the entire time. You had to send them cash to exchange the cryptocurrency. What is the achievement here? You're just sending the cash with like 12 extra steps. But even worse, he tries to make it seem like this is the wonders of crypto and space. It was one of the most yeah. amazing things I've ever seen. They were able to fix their roof. They didn't even have lunch tables. They were eating their food on the ground in the dirt and they were able to get wood for lunch tables. I mean, this is, this is the uh, yeah. amazing economy of space. No, Eric, this isn't the amazing economy of space. This is the fake philanthropist grift. We've seen it thousands of times before. You just give small amounts of cash to poor countries. But when you do, you make sure you bring a, a camera and you make a media tour out of it while you're at it. As I said, wouldn't say anything because, you know, charity is mostly a net benefit no matter the reason. But this story was just so wild. The lengths they went to to make this seem revolutionary was so ludicrous that I had to make an exception. This is the uh, amazing economy of space. 